Uh, guys, we got a bit of a funny one for you. Kind okay. of. Kind of funny, it's but it's, funny. It's, it's actually absurd as well. It's mostly funny. Okay. So um, maybe you could tell everybody about this uh, professor that we're showing here. So this is Huang Heqing, and he works... We're not doxing him, by the way. This is the university yeah. where he works. It has nothing to do with, uh, you know, his... his Zhejiang University, university of Hangzhou. Yeah, this now, is his job, and this is his public thing. We did not get this. This is from an article. I just want to make sure, everyone, that we're not trying to put this guy in blast. No, no. Anyway. Well, he put himself... Huang Heqing, yeah, he's a, a professor at Zhejiang University, one of the best universities in uh, in China. Yeah, it's look, it's respected. So think of your, I guess, your Harvards and your Oxfords and your. I mean, what it's else? nowhere near as good as that. Yeah, China but, does has no universities even close to I, that. I know, but okay, you got, but, yeah, you, you think got about that. Tsinghua University. It's still and not Beijing University. You know, you, but the thing is, you've got in China, you would you would say it would it's be like, top tier. It's top tier. Top it's tier. Ivy League. You know, it's right up at the top. So you can pretend this is like a mainland Chinese equivalent of a professor at Harvard or Oxford. Yes, that's yes, a good point. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, but he still has a one six three dot com email, bro. Yeah. Anyway. Mm -hmm. So can we move? It's making me uncomfortable. All of this information's on here. Okay. So this uh, take a screenshot now. It's, it's literally from an article about yes, yeah, yeah. on the internet. Yeah, we'll uh, put the article in the description when yeah. we're finished. So this is uh, this is a, a picture. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that a Q. Greece. And what this guy said, this Huang Heqing guy, basically he came up with this conclusion, which wasn't even his, by the way. Yeah. That all. Uh, civilization period yeah not just Western civilization civilization period the pyramids yeah uh, the whatever what else uh, the pantheon and Greece, pantheon, yeah you know, the, the, all this kind of stuff all Rome all, yes Rome, all this ancient you know when you think of ancient history there's tons of different uh, sure. you know places he said the Mesopotamians you know the, yeah uh, all the all the ancient civilizations were faked, were faked. They were faked by Westerners and okay so here's the deal I mean, why, why was it faked? Well, we were okay, talking about this yeah. I was like well, so why would it I can see why maybe a Westerner would want to fake Western civilization, to sure. pro like out of pettiness, right? Just sure. prop themselves. So look at how amazing our society is, but actually we built this 100 years ago right? versus 1,000 years ago. Mm. But we are looking into it, and it turns out the reason he said all of these civilizations were faked, because we were confused. Why would you? Why would a Westerner go fake Egyptian civilization? Sure. What does that have to do with a Westerner? Yeah. What does that have to do with an Italian, right? Mm. The reason is, is his claim is that actually we can play his lecture in the background. Okay, Just we'll so you have there. a little ambiance. The reason that these were faked was to denigrate Chinese society. It's, well, yeah, to delegitimize de Chinese de civilization. So we propped up how amazing India was. We propped up how amazing Egypt was, how mm -hmm. amazing Rome was. But we, we did all of that historically to put down China. So yeah. everything was fake. It's all very recent stuff. Yeah, yeah. Was, so we built the pyramids not that long ago. Yeah. And Westerners built and he, them. And he said, he's got all this reasoning that the pyramids were made out of concrete. Yeah by Westerners in order to, again, delegitimize China, make China's civilization seem less amazing than it was. So there's a couple of things <laughs> I want to say about this. Yeah. Maybe just pause it on one of these things here. Sure. Um, his work, basically, isn't his work. And I'm not surprised that a mainland, you know, under the Communist Party of China professor yeah. would... I'm not surprised that they would plagiarize work, yeah. but he's taking, uh, there's some, I think he's French, a French professor or something that came up with this theory. Mm -hmm. And he was, he was a radical. It's not something that people believe, right? Yeah, it's yeah, some sure. weird batshit crazy theory that all this stuff is fake. So it's not even his. Yeah. Um, but he added the element that, hey, it's the reason that they faked all of these things is because to, to delegitimize China, right? And I was thinking yeah. back on this. Right. When I went to school, the mm -hmm. reason I ended up moving to China, you know, ultimately is because of how much I had learned about it. Mm -hmm. I do think education is lacking for maybe modern China, maybe not so much anymore, but when I was going to school, but we learned a shit ton of stuff yeah. about ancient China. It was, it was a huge part of our history. Of course. Like in our classes and stuff. And you know what we learned? We didn't learn that we should delegitimize China's history. No. But what we learned was China was massively more advanced than the rest of the world. Yeah. That's what we learned. So if this is true, if there's all these think tanks and these countries and governments come collaborated to be like screw China, we're going to we're going to push them down, you know, we're going to make all these ridiculous <laughs> fake things, right? <laughs> to delegitimize China. Why then the why Pharaohs do we, built the pyramids with the fake, fake stones. stones? Then why do we learn about in in history class that China was more advanced? It yeah. makes absolutely no sense. No. So, um, well, I mean, again, it's this whole like Han exceptionalism. Yeah. Um, it, and we're going to talk about it a little bit more. 
this guy, as as you now know, is basically this very well respected professor. Right. Is giving a lecture, telling you know his Chinese students and you know everyone in China basically that the pyramids are fake, the Sphinx is fake, the Colosseum in Rome is fake, everything is fake, and the reason it's fake is that Westerners faked it and went and made these fake things right. in order to delegitimize China. Again, I keep saying this, but yeah, I was it's, about to say. it's the dumbest thing mm. ever. It's because, you know, it's like we Chinese are amazing. We Chinese sure. are number one. Sure. We're the greatest. And the only the only reason why other civilizations may also have the same length as Chinese history is because it was faked. It can't right. be real. I don't understand. But the thing is, like, mm. everyone agrees that Chinese civilization was amazing. And the inventions that they sure. came up with were were exceptional. Yeah, yeah, I know, I, but the, I, the thing is, like, you know, you always hear this 5,000 years of history thing they keep going and that, on about. And that's fine. Yeah, it's kind of, it's actually doubtful that it is that I long, mean, to be obviously, honest. Obviously, considering you know? the Mongolians took yeah, over exactly. the Yuan Dynasty, which are still considered a Chinese <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Dynasty. Anyway, the fact of the matter is we have civilizations that are older than China. Okay, That and, is unheard of in China. Yeah. Try telling that to anyone in China. And that's why they're like, no, it's got to be fake. I understand. I'm just saying. That's something that riffs off on this. And you may have seen in the thumbnail that crazy looking guy with an afro is uh, something called Peking Man. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Not Not this Peking Man. Yeah. This This Peking Man. Man. Um, And Peking Man is kind of like, you know how we have Neanderthals and we've done studies and all that to understand that we evolved from an ape into a sort of humanoid thing and with hair and whatnot and then you know we kept progressing and this whole idea humanoid. yeah you know what i mean and this whole idea that we came from africa you know from the cradle of humankind which is actually like a 20 minute drive from yeah, my house in south africa i drove past it a couple of times um it's out there kind of near krugersdorp and stuff anyway the fact of the matter is we this is the the scientific theories that everyone um started at these like ape-like creatures and and you know evolved and went on the different paths and split and off into different the genes and, and whatnot. yeah so and that's why we have you know who we are today that's why you got brown people black people yellow Correct. people white people but we're all you know, from the same but we all source. come from the same source right well when peking <laughs> man was discovered in the 20s uh and it was actually discovered by foreigners but by the way you know foreign archaeologists discovered peking man uh, everybody was incredibly excited that this may be a, like a missing link or something, you know, um, and that uh, perhaps chi- Chinese people evolved from a different source, you know, so not the same source. And this is, of course, theories in the 20s. They didn't know about the Human Genome Project. They didn't know any of this stuff. Um, and so they believed, oh, okay, maybe Chinese people evolved from a completely different species uh, as Westerners or Africans or whatever. And, you know, the science of the day kind of said that. Um the thing is, that theory kind of went away, especially sure. with Mao Zedong and stuff. was like, no, right. you know, that's not the way it is. But in the 90s, there was this resurgence of this like Han exceptionalism, this like Chinese exceptionalism, where it's like, we are a superior race. We're different. And I'm, I'm saying a superior race because that's actually what they believed. If you read the, what's that guy's name? His name's Wu, or yeah, is it Wu yeah. Xingzhi or something? There's an anthropologist who really, yeah, Wu, go down. There it is. Up. <laughs> yes. Okay. Oh, it is. Xing it's Wu, Wu Xingzhi. He's an anthropologist and like a kind of, you, you could say he's an Asian supremacist, basically, through if you read what he says. Sure. And his, the, their whole idea was that they detested the idea that Chinese people, this guy and his followers and his thought process, which is actually quite widespread in China, but detested the idea that Chinese people originated from Africans like everybody else. Okay. It's like, no, we're special. You know, we're not anything to do with that. And there are even cartoons uh, and stuff where you can see like Peking man battling out like with a, a black Neanderthal, you know, and like beating him up and stuff, stuff like that that you can see um, in China. I couldn't find those cartoons now, but I remember seeing them on TV back in yeah, the day. Yeah, I do remember um, that. And it's just kind of ridiculous. So it's this idea that Chinese people are so exceptional that not only do they have the oldest civilization in the world and the best civilization in the world, but they actually come from a different species and they actually evolved completely separate from all other humans. And this is a quite a widespread, even today in modern yeah, China. Put in some of the media. What yeah. I, I actually wanted, to, not to not to SJ Dub over here, but what <laughs> okay. I'm going to say is, you guys got to understand this. Mm-hmm. This only happened, this ridiculous Kool-Aid drinking nonsense only happened because of the Communist Party of China. Right. This wouldn't have existed outside of that. You don't have people in Taiwan talking about Peking man. Sure. You understand? 
people yeah. in Taiwan, other Chinese people, believe mm -hmm. that they come from the same thing. The reason this happens is because it it's just furthers to legitimize one party rule yet again. Yeah. Because when you when you say, listen, uh, we're different from everybody, right? Yeah. We're yeah. we're of a different skull. We have we evolve differently. We're not even from the same stock, right? Yeah. So of course we have a different government. You know when people criticize and say, why are you still a dictatorship with yeah. 1.4 billion people? It's because we're different than everybody yeah, else, yeah, yeah. and it actually legitimizes the, their government. I'm not even joking. Yeah. So it's a political tool. That's why Peking Man was further. Peking Man was further. So yeah. you had Chinese scientists that go. What are you talking about? Sure. There's just tons of real scientists in yeah. China that were like, are you, what's wrong with you? Yeah, sure. Um, are you ridiculous is what I was about to say. Yeah, yeah. And people that actually were, I know, I actually know people that worked on the Human Genome Project in China. Right. In the universities. And they're all like, what are you on about? This yeah. Peking Man Theory has been disproven so many times. Yeah. They took 100 data samples from all different kinds of Asians from around China, right? Yeah, and old it, ethnic minorities and yeah, stuff. Yeah, everyone. And every single one of them was traced back to uh, to South Africa. Yeah, okay. traced back to the the what everybody Southern has. Africa, they all have yeah. the same markers in their genetic code. And you can't yeah. you can't deny that, right? The thing is, mm -hmm. these scientists yeah. were shut down every single time. They still time. get a lot of you know. The problem is when a scientist becomes vocal about the fact that Chinese people are actually yeah. you know from the we're same all one. same stock we're as all, all other one. humans. They often get attacked right. and shut down by, like, you know, the netizens and all the other nonsense and other scientists that still believe in this it's, whooshing it's, it's most, camp. It's mostly government that yeah. does that. The real scientists are not stupid. No, of course not. <laughs> but, okay, the fact is, I actually remember clearly I was watching TV in China mm. where they had, like, a show about this. And it was, mm. they would, they just run, like, new genetic tests using the Human Genome Project or whatever because it had just come out. And yeah. I think it was shot in the, like, early 2000s or sure. something. And I remember seeing the guy's face when he read the results and he saw that, oh, actually, we are the, we are part of this. Right. everyone else, the same right. species. You could see that he was like really proud that they're going to prove now that right. Chinese people are a separate race altogether, like separate from uh, the human race type thing. And he was like, oh, what was the follow up to that? Because that goes against the narrative. They still promote Peking Man. Yeah, I actually don't know. But I just remember watching it on Chinese TV. I think. Mm. I think I know what show you're talking about. And I think what happened in that show was they, they had that, but then they followed up. There's still a lot of research to do. Yeah, probably. Like blah, 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 that kind of stuff. You know they probably I mean? did that. But anyway, it's just kind of ridiculous. And it gives you an idea into the mindset uh, of just China, really. Beijing Yuanren. Yeah, Yuanren. So Peking Man and, uh, you know, this whole, oh, the West faked civilization because they didn't really have it. You know, sure. It's just yeah. Ridiculous. I mean, the, the reason we brought this up is especially mm. with that original professor is not the majority of Chinese people do not think that Western civilization was faked. Sure. The reason we brought him up is is a great segue into this is not the f Chinese first rodeo with this kind of stuff. Yeah. Han exceptionalism has become a tool for the Chinese Communist Party for a very long time, mm. Mm. and why this and you you mentioned it happened in the nineties. It's been furthered recently under yeah. the Xi Jinping uh, mm -hmm. administration because. I shouldn't say administration, under his reign of tyranny. Yeah, tyrannical reign. Uh, the reason is, is it becomes a political legitimizing tool. When you have the internet, you got to shut the internet down so people don't mm -hmm. find out other things. When you have discourse, you got to shut them down. When you have dissidents, you got to shut them down. And eventually it gets pretty messy. But if you can, from the outside, completely warp the education system into thinking we are absolutely different from yeah. everyone in the entire world. Well, I and have anyone to, within our borders needs to be just like us. Sure, I have to draw some parallels to Hitler. Oh, very with, much so. You know, with the whole Aryan thing, so. where he was researching the the you know all, all the things about being Aryan and how different and yeah. exceptional um, you know the Aryan races. It's it's the parallels don't stop there because you yeah. you have a, a Jewish minority in yeah. Germany, right? Yeah, and they were considered a pest. Sure. They were considered a nuisance. They were considered a. a you know, controlling too many things. So they had to do something about sure, it, right? Sure. And the, those haunting memories that we learn about in history class are echoed in 2021. The Xinjiang people, they're too different. They're a pest. They're a pest. They're a nuisance. Yeah. They, won't, they won't integrate with Chinese society. What do they do? Concentration camps, right? Yeah. yeah. So I don't understand how people can't make those connections and how that's sure. considered taboo to make them. Yeah. And it's not a cultural difference, guys. <laughs> nope. You know what a cultural difference is? Is allowing your people to learn reality and not have a professor stand up there and on a podium teaching people that the pyramids are made out of like styrofoam. Yeah, it's ridiculous. I mean, you're talking about a, you know, respected professor. And I think if this happened in the West, 
and a respected Harvard professor came out and said that everything, you know, Chinese history is all fake and made up and all sure. that kind of stuff. You know, I don't think he would be taken seriously, first you know, of shit. all. He'd probably lose his job. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> He'd probably be called racist. Sure. You know, it's, you know what? This, this leads into something we can talk about some other day. Yeah. But I think it's, it's fascinating. When people, a lot of people that like to champion the Chinese government, mm. they can say, never mind the human rights stuff. Yeah. Never mind all this stuff. You know what? It's a net positive for Chinese people because you know why? The Chinese government gets rid of religion mm-hmm. and it promotes science, right? And that's just such bullshit because the Chinese government has actively funded traditional Chinese medicine yeah. as opposed to other science. Why do you think their vaccine is so shit? Yeah. Why do you think it's so... So the scientific... People think China's at the forefront of science because they landed something on Mars. China has pockets of massive funding that supports projects that make it look good. Yeah. But by and large, Chinese people, by and large, Chinese people, especially the older generation, has not a care in the world for science. You yeah. understand? Yeah. There's very much legitimizing. Superstition. And superstition and tradition. Yeah. Tradition, all this kind of mm. stuff, which is, which is fine. Mm. But the problem is your average Chinese person, especially even in my wife's generation, doesn't learn very much about science, right? No, I'm not no. saying they're 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 undereducated. They're definitely educated more in math and other things like this. Sure. But science has never been a top tier precedent, right? No. So I I always find this ridiculous that oh you have to remove religion and then you can promote science because that's what the Chinese government does and that's absolutely not true. No. no. They they promote copying science. Sure. That's Robotics it. and things. Yeah. But, well, I mean that's that that's the thing is like why is it that they always have to steal the secrets and uh, you know steal the formulas and go and copy the the, the everything it's because they're not actually creating it well it is in a but it's also this fallacy that oh so j- one party rule is justified authoritarian oppression is justified in china because that means they can go do science now that's like the most lazy uh, you hear that though yeah, the western do. people you, you have to get rid of religion like a religion is not allowed now <laughs> you have to get rid of the religion and then oppress people and then it can become a, a woke like post-modern society. problem is china does have a religion and their religion is the communist party sure. of china their right. religion is worshipping Xi Jinping thought. Right. You know, when you have a religion like uh, Christianity and Jesus and a Bible, right. now you just have Xi Jinping and his Xi Jinping thought Bible, which everyone has to study. It's the same thing, right. except modern. It's kind of what happened in North Korea with the great leader and dear leader and all that nonsense. Right. <laughs>